Oh, you're fine. Welcome to the Keeping the Nostalgia Live show. I am your host, Billy Powell. I am a broad ripple rocket. And as you can see with me tonight, finally, after years upon years of tracking this guy down, is also a broad ripple rocket. And it's George Hill. George Hill, thank you so much for spending some time with us this evening. No, thanks for having me. Man, uh, so what do you think of Coach Woodson's uh, pick at Indiana University being a broad ripple rocket alum himself? I mean, just not being that, but um, just happy for him, you know, happy for him and his family, um, happy for Indiana to to go out there on the limb and, and give one of their alums a chance. Um, I think that's what most colleges are leaning towards now uh, to to bring in one of their own um, where that university means something to that person is just not a connecting flight coaching job. So. Um, I, I text Mike Wilson, told him, have, uh, congratulations on everything. I'm happy for him, and I wish him nothing but success. Can't you see Coach Smith at the railing up in heaven looking down on both you guys and how successful you've been? Uh, I think about it all the time. I know he's probably pointing at me right now, um, telling me we did it, and I know he's for sure you know, looking down on Mike right now uh, with all smiles, just letting him know how proud he is of him. You know, uh, most people will watch this and go, that guy played at Broderbo. Well, I wasn't a very good basketball player, but uh, I managed four years under Coach Smith and uh, soaked everything in. And what a just a, a great human being that deserved to be in the that deserves to be in the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. I mean, for sure. Just what he stood for alone, um, just being in the inner city, um, the type of coach he was, winning the state title. Um, but not just that, um, the men that he molded and developed um, leads way bigger than just basketball, period. You know, he was a father figure in most of the guy's life. Um, he was a, a constant, you know, person in your ear telling you right or wrong. And, and for sure, he was going to let you know when you were wrong. And that was something that you didn't get from coaches um, outside of basketball. It had nothing to do with basketball, but as a person, as a man, as a young man growing up in the inner city, um, really holding you accountable, let, let you not fall through those cracks that, you know, typical inner city kids would normally do. You know, in listening to about him, uh, his upbringing, going to um, uh, Wood and going to Anderson College, you know, I, I've, I've felt bad. Uh, just the stories and how he was kind of held from doing things. And uh, um, he actually had the right to be prejudiced or racist, but in actuality, he flipped that around and taught me, a white person, how not to be a racist. Does for that sure. Make sense? For sure. You know, um, you know, I used to talk to him all the time about all the stories he had, you know, growing up when he wasn't allowed to do anything because of the color of his skin and how he got treated uh, and things like that. But, you know, to turn back to full circle where we are today, where we're still having these conversations is mind boggling to me. Um, but you know, he, he showed and, and taught me there's no such thing as the color of your skin in my eyes. You know, I'm going to love you as my brother, no matter if you're white, black, blue, green, pink, or purple. Um, I love the person that people are, not the color of their skin. So, you know, I have uh, many friends who are of different ethnicities of, you know, in their life, but I like them as the person rather than what background they come from, however much money they got or don't have, or even if they've been in trouble in their life, it doesn't matter to me. You know, you've got to be the only Broderville Rocket that owns a 785 acre um, a track of land in, in the hill country of Texas and you hunt and fish. Well, hopefully we can get more to follow, but um, complete opposite of what I grew up in in 34th and Keystone area. So um, to grow up in the inner city like that, to, you know, get to San Antonio and, you know, get embraced by Coach Pop in that culture and, you know, rest in, rest in peace, a guy named uh, Will Drash, who was like my San Antonio grandfather with Gloria Drash, um, took me out on a ranch when, in 2008 when I first got there to let me, um, you know, start understanding what you know, life was all about, you know, going out there, riding four wheelers, learning how to uh, break down a gun, learning, learning the good things about what guns can do instead of, you know, thinking that just because you have a gun, you're big and bad. Um, learning how to do it the right way, learning how to break them down, clean them, 
uh, use them for the right things. Uh, they taught me those things and I always told myself if if I ever ever have the opportunity financially to own a ranch, I'm going to do it and, you know, go back full circle. It came true. You know, you just said, you know, being raised in that 34th and Keystone area, you know, I played basketball at tab. I only scored two buckets, but I for played, sure. I played, uh, tell us about what tabernacle basketball meant to you growing up as a kid in that area. So for sure, my mom stayed on 34th and Meridian and my dad stayed on 30 off of 34th and Keystone. So I was the East and the West kid. I was splitting between the both, but, um, the times when I wasn't with my father and I was with my mom, I grew up in the tab area. I grew up at tab my whole life. Um, there was another guy that's there uh, named John Byers. John Byers took me under the wing when I was a little kid and didn't have any money. Um, wearing the same clothes all the time, you know, because we just couldn't make ends meet. Um, he will always help feed me, always give me a place to have shelter, uh, to stay out of trouble and things like that. So my job was to make sure the trophies stay undusted um, and, and to make sure that I sweep the floor and, and things like that. And I can play all the sports at tap for free and he was going to pay out of his pocket. So um, the thing that that done for me, it just opened up my eyes. And I think, you know, for me growing up that way and for guys that had no idea who I was as a kid um, coming from the inner city like that to just give me that opportunity. I think that's one of the biggest reasons I try to give back so much to the city. You know, uh, I'm, I'm not going to stand up because I may be wearing pajama bottoms, but you can tell I have the George Hill Hickory Pacers T-shirt on. And it's getting kind of expensive uh, buying your jerseys. I may have to take out a loan. <laughs> what um, the, the the going with the 76ers and I'm assuming Allen Iverson's number three is in the rafters. Is that why I'm assuming you for, got 33? For sure. Um you know, I joke with my my wife and things like that. And I said, you know, I grew up as a Allen Iverson fan outside of Jordan. I think everybody grew up as a Jordan fan. But um, other than being a Pacer fan my whole life, there was other guys and players that I looked up to. And Allen Iverson was one of those guys. And um, I said, this is going to be the first time in my whole career since middle school, high school, college, NBA that I don't know how I don't have number three on my chest. Um, and it's it's crazy because the reason I wear number three is the reason I can't now. And, it, you know, tell us you, it, another broader pull rocket alum is Kevin Johnson, who's AJ. the trainer. Yeah. And well, I, I know he's probably going to get upset if he sees this, but he was known as sausage or sauce. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so did you know Kevin before you got to the 76ers or? Oh. Uh, Oh, for sure. He, he, we always make it known when we see each other. We, we always say rocket. So, you know, like we always call each other out no matter what team I play for. We always showed each other love. There's not very many of us out there. So um, we, we stick together as best as we can. I went to a Houston Rockets game and I got media credentials and I, I have a, I have a legit what I do, you know, I, people mm -hmm. enjoy what I do, keeping the nostalgia alive and all that. And, and mm -hmm. they didn't put keeping the nostalgia alive on my press credential. They put Kevin Johnson. So uh -huh. when I went down and he saw me, I know he thought I was probably a stalker because I had his name on my on my on my uh, media credential. So I know he's probably stayed away from me ever since then thinking, man, alive. He's even using my name at, at Houston Rockets games. That, that would be a great story. I'm going to have to let him know that. So uh, it, it, where did... You, you started at the other end of the alphabet for naming your kids. For sure. Is, that, is, is, is Y the next letters for any of your uh, upcoming children? Or uh, uh, tell us about the names. Where did you get your names of your children? So my, my wife wanted Jackson for my first son. Um, she wanted Jackson. But at the time, Lavoy Allen just had a kid when I was with Pacer. And he named his son Jackson. And I, I go home like, Hey, I'm not naming my son Jackson because there's another Jackson in the, in the kids' room and we're not about to have two Jacksons, so they think that we're copying off their name. I was like, I don't want names that you hear all the time anyway. So we were thinking about Jaden at first, and I was like, no, nah, babe, that, that's a normal name to me. Like, I want something that's weird, that's different. So I end up coming up with stuff that starts with a Z, and, you know, I go down, I'm like, Zayden. 
and then like all different names like Zyron. And I just started naming off a bunch of like Z names that I take from every other name and just add a Z to it and see how it sounds. And we came up with Zayden and the initial stuck with ZJH. And then we had my daughter and Zoe and we named her Zoe with uh, the two dots above the E uh, just to make it a little bit different. And uh, we kept the same thing, Zoe, Jesse Hill. Are we still convalescing the thumb? Yeah, I got the brace off now. So now I'm just trying to get rehab to like bend the bend it. Uh, so do you have kind of an anticipation of when you'll be in the, the lineup again? Not yet. You know, I'm trying to speed up the process to get back out there. I, I'm itching to get back on the floor. So, um, you know, they just want me to take my time, make sure everything is right uh, before I get out there. Uh, mainly because, you know, when you don't have that rhythm and you don't do other things also, you can kind of tweak other things just by not having that plan shape. So they're going to try to, you know, slowly get me back out there. Uh, what was your feeling about Doc Rivers before you now playing for Doc Rivers? I mean, I've always loved Doc. Um, you know, it's crazy because when I got drafted to San Antonio with the 26th pick, you know, Boston kind of promised me the 30th pick. Um, and that was with Doc. So um, I know that he's a coach that's been one tr trying to get me ever since my rookie year. And, you know, I, I love what he stands for. I love who he is as a man and as a coach and as a person. Uh, and I'm looking forward to, to getting out there and, and trying my best to, to make him happy. You know, I am the biggest Broad Ripple Rocket slash state of Indiana homer there is. And I'll still remember being at a Mexican restaurant here in Houston when the Spurs took you at pick 26, which in reading all media and everything else, that wasn't going to happen. And when that happened, you know, people came over or wanted to call 911 because how loud I screamed about uh, the Spurs picking you. What was it like that night with everything that uh, you and your family have been through and, and going first round NBA draft? It was, it was a little, it was a little different at, to be honest at first, because when I, when I first got, down to like the draft stuff. Um, Indiana kind of was talking to my agent and promising me that I was going to get drafted by them, you know, like the 17th pick that time. Um, so I thought I was going to be staying home to Indiana. Um, they end up doing that trade that sent TJ Ford to Indiana. Jermaine O'Neal got sent out. Um, so they kind of mixed up the whole thing and they called us, say, hey, we're not going with a point guard at this point. Uh, we're going to go a different route. So at that point, I didn't know. And I knew that I worked out for San Antonio twice and I worked out for Boston twice. And they really liked what they seen in the workout. So I knew I had a chance going there. But once the 17th pick didn't go in my favor, I, I really started to get a little nervous. I remember that photo of you being on the phone like, like, oh, my gosh, I just got drafted in the first round. That was, just that, was that was Coach Pop uh, telling me I already had strike one for missing his call the first time <laughs> very cool um you know you guys you guys are entertainers you you, you you're professional athletes how hard is it everybody's hands are out how hard is it to pick a charity uh and and kind of uh, do what you want for someone that you want to do i mean how, how hard is it to make that choices and what kind of charities do you um um uh, do you give to well, for, for me, I don't do anything that I do what I pretty much want to do, um, things that mean something to me. Um, I don't really go what what means to everyone else. You know, I, I find things that, that I'm passionate about, things that makes me happy, and that's what I try to give my time and effort to. So for me, you know, um, I started my George Hill Rising Stars AU program in Indy, which I partner with a good friend now, uh, Chris Scott. Uh, called George Hill All Indy, um, one of the top programs in Indy. But um, I was big on military stuff getting to San Antonio. So, you know, I'm a board member and, and part owner of a company that we started called Wish for Heroes, which we make, um, you know, wish foundations for military families in need during holidays and during crisis. So we do that. And other things I do will be just stuff that, you know, things that I feel is my personality as far as hunting conventions or, you know, things with fishing trips or kids with autism, things that I've done in, in some way 
in certain aspects of life, it impacted me. You know, I was a student teacher at our school at Briarpool my senior year, helping the kids that had autism. So I was big on autism. So now me and one of my good friends, Justin Jackson, who plays for OKC Thunder right now, um, he, oh, he helped start a thing called Gigi's Playroom in Sacramento that we're going to try to do one in San Antonio now. So it's just things that that's touched me in my life. I try to uh, find those things that I can give back towards things that impacted me. Uh, my uh, my 19 year old son is autistic, so that's uh, uh, very well played with uh, um, helping out with the uh, the autistic. Um, George, I, I mean, I know you guys have you guys have a loaded squad. Yeah, you guys should come out of the East. Uh, and I know you're not thinking about the next question I'm going to ask, but ponder it for a second. Do you see yourself continuing in in basketball, like in a in a coaching standpoint, or what what do you see yourself past you know NBA playing days? I mean, a lot a lot of people ask me that. Even like the coaches that I played for ask me, "Am I going to get in?" Uh, I don't think I would do anything NBA wise. Um, it's it's just my personality. I'm. I feel like bigger than the basketball thing. I have life outside of basketball. Uh, but, you know, I told, I always told my friend, I told my trainer, Mike, right now, like when we talk about certain things, like if I was to ever get back into anything basketball, I would be like coaching like a high school, like a Briarpa high school and things like that. Uh, so you couldn't see yourself as Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis head basketball coach? No, nah, I hope I hope my friend, a real close friend of mine, and a guy who like kind of impacted me when I was in college, uh, and who impacted me to come back, even to reach back out to me and make sure I come back to get my degree. I hope he gets a job and stays there for a long time. So, um, no, too political. I, I understand. I saw that on a nice little Facebook post or on social media of something they did on you, which was fantastic and well done, um, George Hill. It's been a long time coming. I appreciate you spending a few minutes with us here on the Keeping Nostalgia Live show. Everybody go to the Keeping Nostalgia Live show on YouTube, subscribe to our page or our audio podcasts on keepingthenostalgialive.podbean.com. George Hill, number 33. That's, that's going to be hard for a while, man. It's going to be weird, but uh, it's a New Jersey, new chapter. Uh, yes, it is. And from one rocket to another, I appreciate, appreciate it. Best of luck for the rest of the season and uh, uh, on into your future. Thank you so much. We got to do this again one time. All right. Appreciate it. Look up Thank to you. it. Look forward to it. Thank you, brother.